anger burned inside me as I aimed my gun at the creatures. I had only one goal in mind, to save my son. With a cry of fury, I fired, targeting the creatures with lethal precision. They emitted horrifying sounds of pain as the bullets hit them, but my son was unharmed. I ran to him, ignoring those creatures, and scooped him up in my arms, feeling an indescribable relief flood my being. I ran back home, leaving behind those creatures that dared to enter my house. The look of happiness on my wife's face when she saw me coming with our son in my arms was priceless. We locked the entire house, and while my wife took care of our son, I swore to protect them wielding the shotgun to all windows and doors. Fortunately, the creatures did not return. I have no idea what those things were. However, my wife's and my dream of being a farming couple ended that night. We sold our property and now lead a life we didn't want but safe in the city. Good night. My name is Brenner, and I want to report here what happened many years ago when I was still single. I was a lonely fisherman and used to camp in the forest. On a particular night, something was about to happen that would change my life forever. Before midnight, while I was preparing my campfire and setting up my fishing equipment, two Indians suddenly appeared in the clearing. Initially, I was startled by their unexpected presence, but soon I realized that the Indians were there with a specific purpose, and in a solemn and urgent manner, they tried to communicate to me that I was in danger. They spoke a strange language, but gestures and facial expressions conveyed the seriousness of the situation. They warned that on that particular night it was dangerous, as a werewolf roamed the forest. Although initially doubting the credibility of the Indian's warning, I decided to stay at my campsite. I was a practical and skeptical man, and did not believe in scary legends and myths. However, as the night progressed and the full moon rose in the sky, a sense of unease began to settle in my heart. The sounds of the forest became more sinister, and a strange feeling of being watched disturbed me, until suddenly, as if emerging from the shadows, the werewolf appeared. It was a huge and terrifying creature, half man and half wolf, its eyes gleaming with wild intensity. I could hardly believe what was before my eyes. In panic, I began to scream for help, remembering the Indians who had warned me about that danger. And as if they had heard my desperate call, the Indians emerged from the shadows, ready to act with skill and determination. The Indians fought alongside me against that beast, using their spears and knowledge of the forest. They managed to weaken that creature. With a furious howl, the werewolf retreated into the depths of the forest. Hours later, the Indians revealed to me that that beast was actually one of them, another Indian who also lived in their village, and that the mission of the two was to protect anyone who entered the forest when he was in his transformation. Since that night, I have never underestimated the power of the legends that inhabit the forests. I decided to abandon that lonely life. I found a girlfriend and ended up getting married, moving to the city. And these memories will stay with me until the day I die. Good night.
In a vast and lush forest, where gigantic trees reached towards the skies and various mysterious creatures inhabited its interior, at the heart of this impenetrable jungle, there was a desire to connect two distant cities through a railway. An audacious undertaking that would require courage, hard work, and a touch of fearlessness. The company responsible for this monumental task sent a team of workers to face the density of the forest, men and women, engineers and laborers, all united with a singular purpose, to forge a railroad that would forever change the connectivity of the region. The initial days of work were challenging, with axes cutting through the dense vegetation and thunderous machines creating clearings in the forest. Nights were filled with the sounds of nocturnal nature, but the workers were determined to achieve their goal. As the railway progressed, the forest seemed to react unexpectedly. Nighttime whispers fueled the workers' imagination. Some claimed to have heard strange voices, while others swore they had seen bright eyes in the darkness. However, these accounts were quickly dismissed as mere forest legends. On a night illuminated by the full moon, the team decided to camp in a recently cleared glade. As the moonlight bathed the area, nervousness enveloped the camp. Fires were lit, and stories were told to dispel the growing discomfort. It was then that something unimaginable happened. Suddenly, a roar echoed through the forest, prompting everyone to rise. The vegetation stirred, branches snapped, and the workers' eyes widened as a colossal creature emerged from the shadows. It was a creature whose form was a twisted blend of different forest animals, sharp claws, luminous eyes, and a roar that sent shivers down the workers' spines. The railway cut through the territory of this creature, and it was not pleased. Panic set in as the creature circled the camp. However, to everyone's surprise, instead of attacking, the creature communicated in a strange manner. It seemed to express sadness and anger, as if lamenting the human invasion of its territory. The creature hinted that it could kill everyone if it wanted to but chose not to, then withdrew. The initially terrified workers realized they needed a peaceful solution. They decided to work differently, promising to minimize environmental impact. This episode left a lasting mark on the workers, who learned to respect nature. Thus, the construction of the railway continued, but now with a new perspective and renewed respect. Weapons were brought to the camps around the construction, but they were not needed, as the creature did not reappear, and the railway was completed, connecting the cities and opening doors to development. Nevertheless, the legend of the nocturnal creature was always told as a reminder of the importance of preserving the delicate balance between man and nature. Hello, good night. First of all, I wanted to say that I'm a fan of your channel and everything I'm going to tell you here was real and everyone involved is still alive, so I won't let me lie. My name is Jose, better known as Junior. I was born in a paradise in the lower south of Bahia. 
on an island called Tavare Island with the city of Cairo as its municipality, right where the famous hill of Sao Paulo is located. Good. That was about five years ago, when I, my partner Gretson, my partner Jachulio, and my cousin Gletson, who was my partner's brother and also cousin Gretson, we decided to go out for a hunt. It was a very beautiful night with a bright, full moon. We scheduled to leave at 7 p.m. and we did so. We walked for around an hour until one of the dogs picked up its scent and ran off into the woods. Then the other two also entered. We waited, insulating the dogs, and when they gave the signal that they had cornered the game, we entered the forest. When we got to the dogs, we didn't see anything. We looked and looked again and nothing. Until one of the dogs looked up the tree and started barking and growling. Gridson shined his flashlight on the tree trunk and saw nail marks. Soon he deduced that the hunt was a large anteater that was up in the tree. We turned on the other flashlights and there was the bad guy. We got him. We decided to continue forward and once again the dog came in and took another game. Another one ahead. But this one was inside a large anthill, so we decided to set a trap and leave it to look another day. After about two hours of hunting, we arrived at a place that is already well known for having apparitions and other supernatural things. Then the dogs ran into the woods. But it seemed like they were being made stupid, for they entered and left. They entered again and left lost. It was then that Jachulio shouted, I already know what it is. This slut is playing with dogs. If she appears in front of me, I'll cut her up with my machete. Then, as soon as he closed his mouth, six dogs ran from one side of the forest to the other. So I said, guys, we only brought three dogs, didn't we? And they said, yes. I said, here it's been six. And then I got goosebumps. Then we started to hear voices and laughter. We saw a herd of cattle coming towards us and we ended up throwing ourselves into the bush. But the oxen suddenly disappeared. Gritson told us to stay together because we already knew what it was. And we knew that she wouldn't let us get out of that forest that easily. The moon shone in the sky and those lost in the woods. We saw a path and a person standing while Jachulio saw hunting. He put the dogs up and the thing that was looking at us rolled away into the woods. Less than a minute later the dogs screamed as if they were being hit by something. And it really was. Every breath of wind froze your spine. We heard loud voices laughing and the paths were covered in weeds in front of us. We didn't feel anything except weeds, even with the moon lit and lanterns lit. All the time the dogs were crying, getting tangled up on our legs. We saw giant fireflies screaming and laughing that were scary. We heard branches breaking around us constantly. From time to time she tried to separate us, making each one see something different, different paths, and even people calling. We knew we couldn't separate ourselves there, because whoever she caught alone would get a hell of a beating, not to mention who knows what else could happen. We fell down ravines, crossed rivers, and mudflats. We were already exhausted, cold, and a little bruised due to the calluses on our boots. It was then that we remembered that we had brought garlic and some rope tobacco. We divided it between the four of us and each one left the garlic mixed with the rope smoke on the floor. And Jachulio threw another amount in the air and shouted take garlic and tobacco and leave us alone. Take garlic, I have more here. And he threw it up again. 
A strong wind passed us and broke everything inside the forest. And at the same time everything calmed down and when we looked we were on the sandy path which was the right way to go home. But I pointed the flashlight at the ground and there was our floorboard. We were walking in a circle all the time. We entered the forest and came out on the path and so on. So we went home around 4 o'clock in the morning. And when we got home I told my grandmother and she told me that we were lucky that we didn't get separated. I haven't hunted since then, but not out of fear. But also because I'm living in Rio de Janeiro now. I miss those adventures. The boys still hunt from time to time, but none of the four of us have forgotten that episode. Well, that was my somewhat summarized account of the day the caper didn't make me get lost in the woods. Sorry for the mistakes in Portuguese. All the names mentioned here are the real names of the people who were with me as well as mine. Thanks again and happy hunting.